forward, you follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Gangsters, cops, and politicians get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. Simon K. Yes, it's your host, Gabe Morales, returning for part two of S last name members who belong to the Nuestra Familia or Northern Structure over the past six decades or so. I'll start off with Daniel Cat Serrano Reveles, who is out of Santa Clara County. He was a NF member in the late 1970s with B number 72543. Understand that he was indicted on the RICO case in 1982, but I don't have much more information on him. There was Arturo Mosco Serato, who is a different guy than Robert Mosco Saldano, who I mentioned in the last episode, and not related, as far as I know, to Richard Richie Serato, who is that Mosco's crime partner. No, I believe this is a totally different guy with no connections. I showed that he was an NF member in the late 1970s with B number 70728. Understand that he was involved in the homicide of Guadalupe Lupe Garcia and was indicted on that big RICO case in 1982, whereby Babel Sosa and Death Row Joe and many of their cronies were indicted by the feds. I show that he was sent to the BOP under number 01515-097, but I show that he dropped out a few years after that and was released from the BOP in 1993. Understand that he came back to CDC under T numbers and Thomas 559, but had paroled by the year 2005. There was Rodney Shark Serial, who I believe was out of San Ho. He was a Filipino NF member, who I understand was an NF associate in 1969 under B number 24839. He ended up being accepted by the Canales, and my understanding is that it was he who designed the NF logo. Although there's others that say it was Joker Mendoza. I'm going to show these two drawings, one signed by Joker and another in a pano that was found in the early 70s out on the calles after a raid where Tarzan Castaneda was hiding out. And you'll see they're totally different styles. So I don't believe it's impossible that Joker drew this. However, very unlikely. Like I said, my sources said it was Shark who came up with that design and Joker did his own. It has since been copied by multiple individuals. So I guess that one will always be up for debate. I show that Shark was housed at DVI on May 3rd, 1974, when he was killed by MS associate Spider Herrera. Somebody had asked about Pacific Islander Asian gang members, and I guess you can include Filipinos in that. And I might do a special episode on that in the future, because actually there was quite a few. There was Ronald Big Lucky Shelton out of San Hole. There is way too much information to cover on this guy in just one episode. But let me give you a little insight. It's my understanding that Ronald K. Shelton was actually called Chanto when he's locked up in the Youth Authority as a young man. Understand that he came into the adult system under C number 42670 and was sponsored by NF shot caller Mano Sosa and I understand was housed at San Quentin in 1985. By 1989, 1990-ish, he had been made regimental commander when he paroled. Understand that Luis Chavez was demoted by Andrew Mad Dog Cervantes, and Lucky was made the head of the regimental security department at that time. An individual named Eli Rosas protested and felt he should have been the number one guy. And later on, that would come back to haunt Rosas. Understand that Lucky often used 
Jerry Cripple Salazar, who I mentioned in the last episode, who he made his head of security. Lucky was extremely active when he was out on the streets and was involved in multiple homicides by his own hand or ordered them. He ended up being charged in the 1992 RICO case. And my understanding is admitted to four murders. Although, like I said, he was involved in many more. I understand in December 1997, he testified against Eddie Pajaro Vargas when he had K number 77012. I understand that he was housed at Corcoran in the year 2002 and was housed at Mill Creek State Prison from at least 2012 to 2023, but is currently housed at Los Angeles County Prison in Lancaster. I believe he had a little brother named Alex, a.k.a. Little Lucky. I understand that he was convicted of a burglary in the summer of 1988 when he was given D number 48867. He paroled in 1989 and had several parole violations after that. To show that he got popped with a firearms charge in 1983, but paroled in 86 and was in and out of custody for many years after that. The last show that he was housed at High Desert State Prison in 2012. There is Tito A. Sedano, also known as Gangster Flea, who was a well-known rapper out of San Fran, locals' Northside clique. One thing for certain is you can't say Gangster Flea was just a studio gangster. He actually put in work. Understand that he first hit CDC in December 2005 with F number, as in Frank, 899-8993. He was validated as being Northern Structure in 2010, housed at Corcoran Shoe in 2012, and I show currently is housed at Salinas Valley State Prison. There was James Wino Sorowski. Yeah, I know that doesn't sound Hispanic because I don't think he was. I believe Sorowski is a Polish name. He looked more like a hippie than a gangster who was out of Oakland and I believe had Oakland tattooed on his abdomen. Understand that he was made NF in the 1980s under C number 87210. The information on this guy is very sketchy. I believe he got his juice selling drugs. I believe he was housed with Tex Hernandez in 1996 in C3B pod. Understand that between 1996 and 97, Wino was lieutenant for Tex Hernandez. But I show that Wino was still not validated as being NF in 2001, even though I understand that he was not well liked by Robert Chico Rose, who badmouthed him and stated he was put on freeze. However, it seems to me like Wino was in cahoots with the feds at the same time Lizard was working for them. Understand that Lizard met with Wino's mom and told her to, to rechannel all NF mail to him. As was very typical during Lizard's reign, he would make people and try to break people. And understand that Lizard, codenamed Rachel, said that it was all bad about Wino. It was said that Wino had badmouthed Cuete, Skip, Lencho, Boxer de Salma, and much of the overall governing body. But Lizard said no, and that Wino was going to be helping him run the streets. Understand that this information was passed on to guys like Flacco from a convict's perspective. Understand that it was Wino that referred Flacco to Powder Killinger in 2002. Wino ordered Lizard to have no communication with Robert Rose due to this beef, an order that was ignored by Lizard, who seemed to be with the feds playing off the animosity between Chico and Wino. Understand that Pinky Hernandez ordered Lizard to chill and for him to report to Wino as well as Huero Gonzalez. Why no, like Lizard and a few others, ended up being indicted under Operation Black Widow and disappeared from the radar. Nobody has since heard from him. So he's likely either still in the witness protection program or is deceased. There was Gary Chingon Silva from San Diego. Understand he was a pretty big guy and was used as an, a young enforcer for the NF in the early 1970s when he had B number 33851. Understand he was made a lieutenant by the mid-1970s at DVI, and was close to Crackers Vindiola and Smiley Ramirez, as seen here. understand he was still at DVI in 1977, but I believe dropped out since he was considered to be part of the Babo Sosa car. There was a John Warchild Sloan out of Clear Lake. I can't say that I know anybody else out of Clear Lake except for this guy. understand that he was a Northern Structure associate around the two year 2000 when he would have been in his young early 20s. Understand that he murdered a guy with the last name of Gonzalez and shot another guy with the last name of Duran in the summer of 2001, which some said got him his stripes in the NF when he had T number 62931. However, I show that in the year 2012, he is only identified by CDC as being a Northern Structure Associate when he was at High Desert State Prison. And I show that he is presently housed at Pleasant Valley State Prison. 
There was Floyd Lee Snell Jr., a.k.a. Charlie O. out of Hayward. I showed that he was a Nuestra Raza member in the early 1990s under J number 58269. I believe he was housed at Sentinella in 1994, but at parole by the year 2004. I then understand that he was arrested by the feds and held at the Santa Rita jail with Charlie Brown Acala when he had BOP number 97441-011. He ended up being housed at Pollock in Louisiana with several of the heavy NF seen here, including NF shot caller Skip Villanueva. And I've heard a couple different stories. However, I understand that there were several complaints that he had been taxing in the East Bay area, stating that he was NF when he actually was not a mate carnal, and he ended up being hit by Skip and held down by several other NF and in soldados in January 2007. It's very clear to me that Skip easily could have killed him, so I believe that this was more of a discipline hit. Of course, after that, he was labeled no good and had appeared on several NF hit lists. There was a, a Guillermo, a.k.a. Sleepy, a.k.a. Capone Solario from Green Pass, which is Greenfield, located nearby Salinas. Understand he was a Nuestra Raza member in 1997 under P number 31473. Paroled in 97, but then returned to custody on a homicide in March of 1998 of a guy named Morales. No relation to me. Understand that he eventually got out on that, but killed a guy named Garcia Sanchez in 2012 and was returned to custody in housed at Pelican Bay Shoe after he was given life, and I understand was recently indicted on a RICO case. I'll mention very briefly, uh, Larry Nidal Soria was at a Sacra Barrio Valley High. This guy only lived a few blocks away from me when he had D number 66455. I remember he was known as being a very respected Northern Structure member at C facility, and I would often see him out on the weight pile lifting weights with the other structure in NF, but I understand he had dropped out around the year 1993. Larry, if you're out there, I hope you're doing good. Next, I'm going to talk about the salsas. It would take an entire episode to cover even part of what I know about the salsas. As many of you know, the Sosa Rio brothers were originally out of Santa Barbara. However, it is my understanding that they moved in the 1970s to live with their mom down in San Diego. In fact, I just recorded a solo episode on the NF San Diego Regiment, whereby I talked to a couple individuals who grew up with the Sosas and later on became law enforcement. I will show the entire episode at the end of the NF roll call. However, here's a little glimpse. So let's get into the Sosa brothers. We've talked about them a lot already, and we kind of just go down the list. How many brothers do you recall, Carlos, that were with the Sosa? I remember Robert, Babo Rio Sosa, Julio Rio Sosa, that was Buggy, Manos was Michael Rio Sosa, and then, you know, we were talking about one other guy, and he, I think he overdosed. He lived in the JLJ apartments there in Chula Vista. You remember them right next to Castle Park Junior oh, High? Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was living there, and I'm pretty sure he overdosed there. No, that's it. Just those, those guys there, the ones that I knew. But I, kn I knew them fairly well because when I was in high school, they were released to the community here in San Diego. Hundreds of these guys, M A and NF, BGF, AB, they were all released by Rosebird into the streets, and they went throughout all of California. Well, the Sosas wound up coming and living in what they call South San Diego, right next to Imperial Beach. And they're the ones that did all of the heavy recruiting for the NF here in San Diego. I would meet with them. Back in high school, they would come over to our house because they were now related by marriage to his, their sister had married my brothers, one of my brothers, Que Paz Descanse. And he would bring them over and introduce them. And we'd each grab a bottle of tequila and they'd tell me all kinds of war stories about how the, the guards would mess with them, you know, and how they'd throw the blankets, wet the blankets all over their their heads and they'd get the gas thrown in their self. I didn't know if anything was true, but back then I was in high school and I, it was just, it was just fun to hear them talk. A quick profile of each of the Sosas. Understand that the father's name was Julio and the mom's name was Gloria. There also was Linda Sosa Bercera, who we've talked about before, who was the wife of Babo and many blamed for his impeachment. Understand that she was with Babo when he passed in 1993. Robert Babo Sosa was born on December 20th, 1945. And no, he did not serve in the military. I kept on hearing rumors about that, but there's zero evidence that ever happened. Understand that he committed multiple burgs in 1967 and was first housed at CTF Soledad at the end of 67 under B number 6230. Understand that his sponsor was NF original member Freddy Gonzalez. I've talked many times about the infamous shoe war and... Baba was present 
when Cricket Gallego from Diamond Street was killed in September of 1968. I believe Bob will beat that case, even though there was a lot of circumstantial evidence that tied him to that crime. I show that he got out, but then came back on a parole violation in 1971, first to Vacaville, and then was sent to San Quentin in 1971. During 1969 through 1971, CDC tried to separate Mexican Mafia and NF. However, by 1972, the war had reignited. And it is at that time that the NF killed MA icon Cheyenne Cadena. And it's my understanding that Baba was pulled down in 1973 at Chino's Palm Hall. Understand he remained at CIM Chino in 1973, which was considered to be the headquarters for the NF. And the NF was without a certified leader under the Padre system. It is at that time that a vote was taken, and Babo was notified by Code Speak saying that he had been given the keys to the supermarket. It was in 1973 when Babo, Death Row Joe, and a few others ended up reformatting the Constitution, eliminating the Padre system, and implementing a military system, which is where maybe some people got the idea that he had served in Vietnam. He was the sole Nuestro General, while Death Row Joe was made his number one captain. He was housed at CTF Soledad in 1974, but had paroled by 1975. Babo ended up returning to custody at San Quentin in 1976, which angered a lot of people, including Death Row Joe, concerning their efforts to control the streets. He was housed at DVI in 1977, where he was still considered to be number one. He, however, Death Row Joe and Bobble ordered the deaths of multiple NF members all the time while they were accused of violating the constitutional rules. It got so bad that there was a major movement to impeach both of them by Black Bob Vasquez and Brown Bob Miramontes in 1978, an effort that was eventually successful. He ended up being housed at New Folsom Prison in 1991 with his former loyal enforcer, Fagov Leals, both seen in this picture here, actually spoke to Bobo at that time, and he was debriefed by one of my, my dear friends, Sergeant Den Donna de la Garza. Now, I've had some people, including major members of the California Gang Task Force, saying that this was bullshit, that I never talked to him and he was never there. However, before he died, I talked to former Folsom Warden Robert Borg, and by that time had been acting as a legal defense expert. And he told me, in fact, that yes, he did pull Bobble there to New Folsom A Yard, which was the PC side, and that he got a lot of flack over it too. In addition to Bobble, there was John Hippie Sosa, who had A number 91456, who I understand was at least an NF associate, although I've had some of the gang task force members say that no, he never was. There was Julio Jr., a.k.a. Buggy Sosa, who had B number 26810, who's seen here in this picture in the Pro Board hearing room of San Quentin circa 1969, and I understand was at San Quentin until at least 1972. It's my understanding that Buggy ended up overdosing in February 1997 down in San Diego. There was also uh, Michael Mano Sosa, who had B number 2882802. Two. I guess a lot of NF guys thought that he was always a main carnal since he had been functioning with them for many years, but a later investigation found out that he had no sponsor. Thus, he was sponsored by Old Folks Patino. Understand that he was involved in a homicide while he was at DVI and ended up getting a Northern Star for that hit on his cheek and was considered to be a lieutenant under his brother Babo Sosa's regime. When Babo got impeached, understand that Black Bob and Brown Bob took a chance and allowed Manos to go over to the new NF, which operated under a Mesa system, which disbanded his brothers, Sol Nuestro General, set up, rewrote the Constitution, and implemented a, a three-general Mesa with captains underneath them as advisors. And it is my understanding he assisted with the approval of the XIV bonds that were written at Folsom 4A, circa 1983, and distributed to the general population in 1984. When I believe he was housed at Tachbishu, was housed at Tachbishu in 1988, and eventually was moved to Corcoran Shoe and dropped out. I then understand that when he was a dropout, he ended up working as a canteen store worker as well as a tear tender. I believe that his mom, Gloria, died around 1991, and I believe things, and I believe he had then been divorced from his beautiful wife, Roxanne Ro Roxy Robles. It is my understanding that. He had become very depressed after that and committed suicide on March 4th, 2009. There's a Philip Sparks, who I believe was out of Salinas, however, was living in Hollister when he was arrested. 
He was found to be a regimental commander in the year 2010 and was the owner of Forbidden Ecstasy when he was swooped up in September 2010 by the feds under Operation Street Sweepers and given BOP number 13444-111. Understand that he was involved in a major hunger strike at the Fresno County Jail in 2013 when multiple NF and N soldados were being held on the sixth floor of CPOD. And that show was released in October 2021 on that case. There was Willie, a.k.a. Shadow, a.k.a. Sombra, Stokes Ramirez, who I believe was half black, half Latino, out of Salinas. Understand that he sold drugs back in the mid-80s when he was still a teenager. Understand he ended up doing over 17 years locked up, gaining his first CDC number under E numbers in Edward 70410. I show he was housed at DVI in 1991 and at San Quentin in 1994, but it was only validated as being a Northern Structure Associate in 1995. I show that he was housed at Pelican Bay in 1999 in C6, and I believe was made NF by Lizard Hernandez by year 2000. He ended up being indicted on Operation Black Widow and dropped out shortly after that. He ended up paroling in the year 2003 and started a black sheep Redemption Program, which is a gang intervention program in the greater Santa Cruz area. Willie, if you hear this, I'd love to interview you one day about your work and experiences during the time you were involved in the NF. And with that, this is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Cops and politicians get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision.